again. It's Blake with Northwinds Wilderness School. Last week we started a new series that we're calling Track of the Week. We started off the series with a domestic dog track for several reasons. Um, first of all, domestic dog tracks are very, very common. Second of all, it's often difficult to differentiate domestic dog tracks to wild dog tracks. So we talked about several strategies you can use to figure out what species, or at least narrow it down to what couple of species you're dealing with. This week we found kind of a cool mystery, and it's another one that's really common probably to wherever you live. Um, we have a lot of them here in northern Wisconsin, but I know they also have them in California, Arizona, Montana, Florida, Massachusetts, New York, everywhere. So if you're in North America, you probably have this animal. Um, stick around, I'll show you what we're talking about. All right, I found the first thing that I wanna show you today. And that's this pattern right here. So the first thing that probably jumps out at you is that this and this are the front feet and this and this are the rear feet. But what I wanna tell you is the animal is moving in this direction. It is true that these are the front feet and these are the rear feet, but this animal moves in a bounding pattern. So the front feet hit the ground and then the rear feet come around the front feet and then it pushes off. The front feet hit the ground and the rear feet come around the front feet. So these little marks here are the front feet. These are the rear feet, but the animal is moving in this direction in a bounding pattern. This animal is very common in yards, wastelands, oak forests. Maybe by now you've guessed it's a gray squirrel. Um, you know, where I live, we have chipmunks, we have flying squirrels, we have gray squirrels, we have fox squirrels. Did I mention red squirrels? So there's a few ways to differentiate between the different species of squirrels. I'll show you one right now. If you can fit four of your fingers inside of this track, you're probably looking at a gray squirrel. Here, three fingers, you're probably looking at a red squirrel, maybe a big flying squirrel. Two fingers, you're probably looking at a chipmunk. If you get down to one finger, you're probably looking at a mouse. So I found a really good track that I wanna show you right here. If you'll join me. I'm gonna outline it, but I don't wanna risk damaging it. This is the rear foot. It looks like rear right of a gray squirrel. If we put the ruler down, you can see that a car is driving by. Sorry about that. The track is about an inch wide, so that's gonna rule out red squirrel or chipmunk, definitely flying squirrel. Also, do you see, here's toe two, toe three, toe four, I'm sorry, toe one, toe two, toe three, toe four, and toe five. The middle three, so toes two, three, and four, are welded together. If you picture this as the rear foot of a squirrel, these three toes are welded together. They use these ones for gripping and these ones kind of dig into the bark as they're climbing up and down trees. So on the track, you can see they've got a thumb and a pinky and these three middle toes are glued together. Also, you can see the claws. I will post a really high quality still picture of this to help. Now, let's move right up here. This track right here is the front foot. It looks like, actually it looks like front uh, right to me. You can see how it's kind of roundish. It's got a star pattern. It's got four little dots for the palm pad. And these toes have big long claws for digging in and grasping the bark as they climb. So we've established thoroughly now that this is a gray squirrel. Track size of the gray squirrel is a good starting point. If it's more than an inch and a quarter, if it's, an, I'm sorry, if it's an inch and a quarter long or more, 
you're looking at a gray squirrel. If it's an inch and a quarter, it could be a small gray or a large red. If it's less than an inch and a quarter, you're looking at a red. Anything smaller than that, you start getting into flying squirrels, chipmunks. Um, there's a lot more overlap, but that inch and a quarter mark is gonna be your cutoff between a red and a gray. We're also seeing the rear feet with those three middle toes welded together. Red squirrels do the same thing, but if we're looking at three toes welded together and a track that's an inch and a quarter or more, you're definitely looking at a gray squirrel. Plus, we're gonna do that handprint. If you have small hands, you could maybe fit your whole hand inside the bound pattern of a gray squirrel. For larger hands, we're gonna look for four fingers. Now, let's just follow this bound pattern for a minute. So our squirrel comes down out of this tree. He hits the ground right there. He jumps to there, here, We've got a bound pattern and a mouse trail, or actually it's more likely a vole. And then this bounding pattern goes from here, he jumps to here, to here, to here, he jumps to here. And then his next one goes all the way to here, which is the first one we were looking at. And then to here, to here, down to here, up to here, this one again shows really clo clo clearly, front foot, front foot, rear foot, rear foot, but he's still moving in this direction. He jumps to here, then all the way to here, down to here, up to here, and then he goes up the tree. He comes down an oak tree and goes up an oak tree we're clearly looking at a gray squirrel. Just for comparison, I wanna show you what a bound pattern of a red squirrel looks like. So this is our red squirrel. So again, we have front foot, front foot, rear foot, rear foot, which indicates that he's moving this way towards that wood pile where he's probably got a nest built. If you look, his front tracks are just under an inch and his rear tracks are under two inches and look if I put my four fingers over it it covers the whole track cut that down to three we're well inside the track this is a red squirrel bounding pattern you can see the clear differences between a red squirrel and a gray squirrel other things to look for would be that pine squirrels typically live in or I'm sorry red squirrels typically live in pine trees Gray squirrels typically live in oak trees, although neither of those are rules. You will find red squirrels in oak trees and you will find gray squirrels in pine trees as they climb up trees for their defense mechanism and in the moment they don't care what kind of tree it is. So I hope this track has been interesting for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you get out and look for a squirrel track and try to figure out what kind it is. One of these days I'll find some chipmunk tracks for you and then we can compare all three. If you've learned anything from this video or you found any value in it, please find someone to share it with. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment. I want to know what you think about this. I want to know that we're actually impacting you and that we're teaching you something and maybe fostering a love of nature. My name is Blake, Northwinds Wilderness School. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.